Hey, Biker Trash here with a movie review for Revenge of the Fallen. If y'all have not seen it yet, go see it. It's good. And it's good for you. Actually, I, I have no proof to that, but I'm just going to say it is. Uh, anyway, this movie, it took everything that, you know, I gave the first movie a good review, like right after seeing it. But after subsequent viewing, there's stuff that I realized I really didn't like that much about it. Like, uh, the three, what I call, the three trademark Michael Bay cameras. You have the super close that you can't see what's going on because it's too close camera. And then, you have the, oh my god, everything's shaking around and everything's like, oh my god, what is going on with this camera? Camera. And then, then, you have the... I'm not actually looking at the action. I'm looking at what's going on around the action camera. So, those were almost entirely absent from the film, and it's all the better for it. I mean, if I would have known that this was a Michael Bay film, I wouldn't have thought it was a Michael Bay film. I mean, it actually looked like somebody who knows what they're doing directed it. Uh, that said, uh, I'm going to try and just tell you all how good this movie was. I mean, I'm a grown man, alright? Grown up, maybe not mentally, but anyway. And I was sitting on the edge of my seat for like probably a good two-thirds of the movie. Well, at least all the fight scenes, because the fight scenes are just blow... I mean, the entire movie blows the first one away in every way, shape, and form imaginable. Uh, except for one part. I'll, I'll discuss that in a second. Um, but anyway... It's just great. Go see it. Go see it twice. I'm going to see it again. Uh, I'm going up to Sicily Island to run my truck this weekend. Uh, but when I come back, I'm going to watch it again. Um, so basically, uh, spoilers from this point on, most likely. Uh, the fights are phenomenal. I mean, Wuss Prime from the first movie is dead and gone. He's been replaced by a leaner, meaner Kung Fu Prime who can, like, one-on-one -on -one would own Megatron because he was fighting in this one scene, his death scene. He was fighting Megatron. He was fighting Starscream. And he was fighting a Blackout clone, who I think is Grindor from the game. But apparently, the Decepticons have multiple Transformers with the same alt mode. Uh, let's just touch on this now. I, I was going to touch on it later, but... Devastator. There are apparently multiple Constructicons, multiples of each, because while Devastator is combined and like smashing, like, oh, smash! <sighs> you know, and that was pretty neat, his uh, Vortex of Doom. Uh, there's more Constructicons running all over the place. There's Long Haul for sure, I saw. Uh, let me see, where is he? Um. And Rampage. I just want to touch on this on Rampage because I gave Rampage such an awful review. And he's still a bad figure. Trust me. It is still a bad figure. But, you know, this is Rampage the toy. This is Rampage the animation model. Right here. All this, this uh, stuff right here just goes away. And this is all he is. And he gets owned by Bumblebee. You know, these are spoilers, so I will just say what I'm thinking. And in the same fight where Bumblebee is fighting Rampage, he fights Kitty Bot. And Kitty Bot has what I'm convinced is the best death scene in a movie ever. I mean, this is like Mortal Kombat level death. I mean, it was like... You know, he's so light, Bumblebee's like swatting him and hitting him, but he's so light, he just flies and comes right back. So what Bumblebee finally does is knock Rampage in the head and stun him, and then he grabs him by the tail and like does like that. And when I first saw it, I was like, oh my god, because he pulls his spine out of his anus. And I was like, oh my god, that is awesome. And my girlfriend sitting next to me like, oh my god, that's terrible. So, yeah, it was good. Uh, she cried a little bit whenever Optimus Prime died. Not not like, oh, 
oh, not like I did when I watched the 87 movie in 87, like, <gasps> Optimus Prime died. It wasn't that because you know he's going to come back, because the Jetfire toy combines with Prime. But anyway, um, listen, I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed this movie. I have not enjoyed a movie like this since probably I went watch the original Matrix. Not part two, not part three. Although part three was better than part two, but anyway, I have not just been like, I was on the edge of my seat. Do you understand me, people? Um, the characters have actual personality. The ones that get like major screen time, like uh, Sideswipe here has like maybe two lines in the entire movie. One of them is, damn, I'm good. And I can't even remember the second one, but I think he has two lines. Uh, every once in a while, this blue Transformer shows up, and you're like, who's that guy? And in like the last four minutes of the film, you finally find out that it's Jolt. And it's like, oh yeah, Jolt. Yeah, it's a, uh, a Chevrolet Volt. He's got a generator in him. Yeah, I got it. Um... Uh, I thought he was a Malibu at first, but anyway, uh, characters I thought would be major players, because I mean, like, in the game, you know, you play as, uh, Sideways, so I thought, you know, Sideways is in, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna be a major player for the Decepticons. Wrong! I mean, in like the first three minutes, he dies. He gets cut in half by Sideswipe, and it's like, <laughs> well, that's disappointing. I mean, I think he was in robot mode for like 10 seconds. You say it was robot mode. It was so short he was in robot mode, you didn't get a, even get a good look at him, except you saw him real good in car mode a lot. Uh, oh, and side note, someone said that I started off my Revenge of the Fallen reviews with the worst Transformer from the line right here. Uh, I'd have to disagree that this is not the worst Transformer from... Revenge of the Fallen. That dishonor would go to RC. I don't like RC at all. That is like it's a neat on it's neat on screen. It's kind of like uh, Demolisher. Demolisher looks awesome on screen. Then you get his figure, and it's like that ain't the same guy. But anyway, um, movie, movie. Yeah, the plot device that I hated was uh. Sam goes to college. Right after he destroys his house, thanks to he finds a piece of the AllSpark and it brings everything in his house to life, which I thought that it made all the Transformers evil in the first one because of being exposed to Megatron's energy for so long. I guess it's still good, but, you know, everything in his house, all the toasters and blenders and the, the Dyson bot rocks. Uh, the garbage disposal bot's pretty awesome, too. But anyway, uh... Yeah, it's just off the chain. But then, then he goes to college and leaves Bumblebee at home. And he meets up with this evil witch concubine that is just trying to molest him at college. And turns out, you know, right before she tentacle rapes him, uh, you find out, well, no, actually it's when she attempts to tentacle rape him, I guess you find out that she's like the Terminator. She doesn't ever transform into anything except a, a chick. But it's like they ripped off the Terminator for a plot device. Uh, in the same year that they just had a Terminator movie, they rip off the Terminator. Uh, but anyway, uh, going on. Uh, there's two instances of tentacle rape in this movie. Uh, her attempted tentacle rape and Soundwave up in orbit tentacle rapes a satellite. And I'm like, you know, I never thought this would make it to an American film. I mean, I, I imagine it's pretty much the norm in Japan, you know, but uh, tentacle rape has gone mainstream in America. And I think we're all the worse for it. Yeah, I'm smiling, but you know, it still is. It's like, wow. But anyway, um, listen. Great, great, great movie. Go watch it. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Don't bring your girlfriend. She'll be like, oh! poor kitty but you know besides that it's it's fantastic you know actually that's fantastic too but uh on a different level so listen y'all have a good day i hope this helps y'all out because it is just 
go watch it. Even if I sound like an idiot and he's like, man, that doesn't sound like fun at all. Go watch it. I mean, it's enjoyable. Uh, and if, if anybody out there thinks the plot's a little light, which it might actually be, go watch some G1 episodes and start complaining about light plot. I mean, then it's like, wow, Megatron's got a new plot to take over the world by using this dam. Or, wow, Megatron's going to start harvesting rubies. Oh, Megatron. It's like, yeah, Transformers has never been about plot, except for Beast Wars. So, uh, yeah, go watch the movie. Y'all, y'all, if y'all don't have fun of this movie, check your pulse.